Welcome to Isadora Tutorial 7. We're going to reinforce our understanding of scaling in this tutorial by doing an exercise called the self-generating patch. So in the last tutorial we began covering scaling and I know that that's a pretty big step because suddenly we left from just hooking some things up to a big world of math. So I'm going to take that topic and continue with it but we'll do it with hopefully uh, have a little fun as we're investigating it. So again we're going to make a new scene I'm going to click to the right, go to the Scenes menu, say Insert Scene, and right away I'm going to rename it, and we're going to call it Gen for Generate. We're going to make something called a self-generating patch. You're going to need a Shapes Actor to start, and a projector, and you can immediately just connect those together. And in fact, let's take those and let's move them over here a little bit. So, just to review, the horizontal position controls the horizontal position of the actual shape. The vertical position controls the vertical. The width controls how wide the actual shape is. And the height controls how tall it is. So all of these can be changed uh, either with the mouse, as I'm doing now, or you could use one of the uh, actors that generates numbers, like the mouse watcher or the envelope generator, or the actor I'm going to show you now, which is again from group number four, called the wave generator. Uh, just to be clear, uh, there's a free frame plugin called Wave, and don't get those confused. You want the one called Wave Generator. You'll know it because you can see that it has this little shape here and the little yellow line going through, again, giving you some feedback about what this is doing. For those of you who are musicians, uh, you will recognize this as something we call a low frequency oscillator. It's basically making a wave, and it's doing it at a rather low rate. The rate is actually controlled by this input on the Wave Generator, which is the frequency. It's specified in hertz or cycles per second. That means the same thing. Right now it's going at one hertz, so that means it takes one second to go all the way across and then it goes back to the beginning. And the shape that it's making right now is a sine wave. So it's going up and then back down and then up and back down with a little bit of a curve at the end. So let's see what this is like. Let's just say for the beginning, we just want our little shape to move back and forth. In fact, let's make it quite a small thing. Let's set the width and height to four. So we just have a little dot. That will be our starting point. Now I'm going to take the wave generator and I'm going to hook it into the horizontal position. And as we saw in the last tutorial, it's going way off the edge of the stage. I'm not going to worry too much about exact positioning here. We're just going to really play around. So I'm going to click on the horizontal position to call up the inspector box. And in there, you see again the scale min and scale max. Now to remind you of that one more time, the center of the stage is zero. Minus 50 is here at the edge, minus 100 is over here, and minus 200 is over here someplace. And the same for plus, plus 50 and plus 100 would be off the screen somewhere, but you get the idea. So let's say that we just want to have this vibrating in the center of the stage. So we know zero is the center, so let's maybe say minus 10 to plus 10 is a place to start. So I go here to these two inputs, the scale min and the scale max. Those are the things that control the actual, the actual range that the object is going to move. So I set that to minus 10 and plus 10. And now you can see that it's oscillating back and forth just in the center of the stage. Now remember, the wave generator is like the envelope generator. Its output goes from 0 to 100. But whenever you hook up an output that has a particular range, to another input, Isadora automatically scales it. So in this case, it's actually making it smaller. It's starting with 0 to 100, and it's scaling it down to the range of minus 10 to plus 10. So I think that's perfect. We have a nice little oscillating object. Let's go on. We'll make another, another shape. So this time, I'm going to select the Shapes Actor and Projector, and I'm going to go to the Edit menu and say Duplicate. So now I've got another one. The second one isn't moving because we haven't hooked any generators up to it yet. Let's say this one we would like to make much wider, like so. For the moment, I'll move it here. And this one we're going to go up and down, but really quite slowly. That's going to be our goal. So we know that this is minus 50 or something around minus 50 in the vertical, and this is plus 50. So I'm just going to duplicate the wave generator too. And this one, I'm going to hook to the vertical position. Now again, it's going way off the stage. 
we remember we just talked about the fact that minus 50 is at the top and plus 50 is at the bottom. So I go to the scale min, minus 50, scale max 50. So now it's moving up and down, but it's still moving pretty quickly. Remember we said our goal was to make it move more slowly. So I'm going to adjust the frequency of the wave generator. I'm going to click on the where it says frequency, and I'm going to turn that down to 0.1 hertz. So now it takes quite a long time to go up and to go down. I'd also like to make this a different color. So to change that, you have these two color inputs. We haven't seen that before in Isadora either. And so it's pretty easy to do. I'm going to click on the color itself, the box, and when I do that, I get a standard color selection box. I'm going to change the color to bright red and say OK. Now you'll notice that it has actually a white outline. That's because there's the fill color and the line color. Now I can make that line disappear by setting the line size to zero. Or if I wanted to, I could make it thicker by setting it to a higher number, as we can see. But for now, I'm going to set the line size to zero so I just have this perfectly red line moving up or down. Okay. Let's add one more. And this time, we're going to copy and paste our shapes, actor, and projector. And I'm going to use two wave generators this time. I just copied and pasted those two. I'm going to hook these now up to the width and the height. So now, the shape isn't actually moving around like left or right. It's just growing and shrinking. Now again, the width and height can go to 0 to 200 percent again. It's always being scaled. So we're going to control this so it doesn't get quite so big. I'm going to click on the word width to get the inspector box. I'm going to say that the smallest I want it to be is 2 percent and the biggest is uh, 15. And for the height, I'm going to do the same thing, 2 and 15. So now I've got this red square that's kind of breathing in the center. Let's change the color of that too just so that we know that there's a slight difference. I'm going to make that one a little bit more orange. And I want this to be pretty frenetic. I don't want it to be quite so calm. So I'm going to take these wave generators and I'm going to turn them up to a much higher frequency. 1.4 for the bottom one and 1.7 for the top one. So now you see we've got these three elements. We've got them moving around at different rates, changing size, one of them, and we're precisely controlling where they appear on the stage. So I'm sort of hoping that in doing this little simple example, you're starting to see that the scaling is really, really critical for controlling any number of aspects of how Isadora works. I'm going to give you one further example using an effect just to round out this because it doesn't just apply to the shapes actor. The scaling applies to any number inside of Isadora. I'm going to quickly make a new scene. So I insert a scene and I call it Gen 2 and we're going to have a movie player, dots actor, and a projector. Now I'm going to go very quickly here. You can always pause the tape and catch up with me in a moment. But I'm going to play the movie called iZoom and turn the color on so we see. So there's our dots. They're a size of four and I can adjust it like we've done before using the dot size. Now notice that if I turn the dot size all the way to 100, the space between them is so big that I can't actually see the dots anymore. So in fact, that's not so useful. And when I set them down to one, they get really, really small. So I'm going to suggest that we're going to use a mouse watcher to control the size of the dots. But the smallest size I want is 3. And the biggest size, let's say, is 25. So again, I clicked on the word dot size and changed the scale min to 3. That's the lowest size they'll ever get and the scale max to 25. Now I can connect my mouse watcher to the dot size. When I'm all the way at the left of the screen, the dot size is 3. And when I'm all the way at the right, the dot size is 25. So the scaling, again, is one of the most important features of Isadora when you're moving on to try and do more complicated patches. I really encourage you to explore this a little bit as we go through this tutorial and make up your own exercises because if you get this, that's when you're going to be able to make the next big leap into really using the program in a really powerful way.